So a couple days ago, I made a video on this guy called Alex Mazmesh, and he basically, long story short, sold himself as cryptocurrency to help himself out in a time of need. And it worked amazing for that guy, and I thought it was going to be the end of it. But I said in that video I would look into this guy, who is apparently the progenitor of modern-day self-slavery, and his name is Mike Merrill, and I absolutely have to make a video on this because his story is at least a hundred times fucking crazier than Alex's. So let me paint a picture for you here of what's going on. It's 2008, mid-recession, and this 30-year-old guy named Mike Merrill decided to split himself into 100,000 shares. Now, just to give a brief overview on what a share is, if you don't know anything about business, it's just like a percent of a company. And all companies do this, and the more shares you buy of said company, the more power you have over the decisions of that company as a stakeholder. And he split himself into 100,000 shares or pieces, whatever you want to call it, and sold each one for a dollar. So the premise of this operation is very simple. Mike basically just wants to split himself into 100,000 pieces, sell each piece for a dollar, and have the people that buy these pieces have a say over his life and get a percentage of whatever Mike makes in his life. Now, the more pieces you buy, obviously, the more power you will have over Mike's life. So over the next couple weeks, about 10 of his friends got together and bought a total collective sum of 929 shares. So at this point, Mike was probably just thinking to himself, Hell yeah, man, this is, some, this is some fucking free cash with this little thing I got going on. What he probably wasn't anticipating was that over the next few years of his life, over a hundred fucking 20 people would go on to buy some of these shares, making his life very chaotic and breaking ties with people that Mike had known for fucking years. Now, this whole thing started getting crazy when Mike moved in with his girlfriend, Willow McCormick. And from what I understand and from what I've read, Willow was a perfectly fine and a normal girlfriend. I mean, they got along super well. She was a public school teacher. They knew each other for about two and a half years. So it was probably overdue, to be honest. The problem was that Mike didn't like the idea of moving in with her because he had a lot of ambitions outside of the relationship. And I guess he just didn't want the constraint of a uh, relationship living under the same roof. Now, this did cause a bit of a ruckus because some of Mike's stakeholders that, I mean, they were friends with Mike, they had been upset about the move in because they had no say in the matter. And I mean, Willow had some stock into uh, Mike, but it was only like 19 shares. So her say was very, very weak in this uh, environment. Now, this lack of power that Willow has over her own fucking relationship will become a bigger problem down the line. And the most prominent way it does is when they're discussing getting a vasectomy for Mike. Basically, they had both agreed for the longest time, but Willow was getting older and I guess she wanted kids. So she started proposing the idea. And what Mike did was without consulting Willow at all for her opinion, he put out publicly to his stakeholders the situation and whether or not he should get a fucking vasectomy. Even more, uh, Mike put his own personal opinion about the matter and said that having a baby is way too time consuming and cost uh, heavy and they should probably vote for him to get a vasectomy. So Mike... I guess he didn't really want kids, so instead of telling his girlfriend, uh, I'm going to get a vasectomy, I'm just going to hide behind my stakeholder's excuse. So, of course, this pissed Willow off because, I mean, again, she had no say in this matter at all. And when she confronted Mike about it, all Mike said it was, just, just buy more shares, pussy. Just, just have a bigger say over my life, dummy. And, I mean, she didn't feel like she needed to do that because she's her fucking girlfriend. Uh, whatever though, what, instead of buying more shares, what Willow did was she talked to this guy. Now, Mike paid this software developer $500 and 500 shares of, you know, his IPO to make a website that would allow the stakeholders of Mike's, uh, shares to publicly trade and talk and give opinions on his life. 
And that's what he did. He created the website and that's what Mike actually used to put out the fact that he was bummed out about the vasectomy thing. Um, Willow was able to convince this uh, software developer because at the time, this guy had the most power over Mike's life. So Mike almost got a vasectomy if it wasn't for his girlfriend stopping him at all costs. What she couldn't stop Mike from doing was fucking up the next three, four days of his life as he tried to implement polyphasic sleeping onto his uh, daily schedule. If you don't know what polyphasic sleeping is, please don't try it. It's fucking hard to do. It's basically instead of sleeping eight hours every night, you sleep 30 minutes for two hour intervals throughout the day and it's supposed to cut like four hours from your sleep but a it's really fucking hard for your body to adapt to that and b it cuts right through your life right through your work right through everything you know pretty much so even with that software developer that i talked before backing willow again most of the stakeholders and uh, that had a share for mike voted towards that idea and the results were as expected because in about like four days mike completely dropped the project and he just he was too miserable to do anything and this pattern of stakeholders having a bigger say than willow did over her own boyfriend kept repeating throughout the uh, relationship uh they voted him to become a vegetarian even though he was a fucking avid meat eater they voted him to vote Republican, even though he was a longtime Democrat, because Republicans are more business friendly. And over the years, Willow just, she had enough and she just split because she felt like, you know, she was giving a, a rough bargain here. See, the, the mic she met was not the mic she got at all. She got a fucking android, a Decepticon. Now, personally to me, this whole plan seems fucking horrible, both for Mike and for people, because, I mean, Mike inevitably is setting a precedent that um, you might be better off selling yourself than in your current life. And for Mike personally, it just, it seems like a lot of things could go wrong. Because, for example, shortly after Mike split off with his girlfriend, um, his customer service job gave him a $100,000 uh, insurance policy as a benefit and his stakeholders immediately decided that that money in the event of Mike's death would go to the stakeholders themselves so there I mean Mike is alive and he's still being sold throughout the fucking world he's been sold to more than like 800 people by now but there are a lot of people in that stakeholder um, medium that are very motivated to have Mike just die because they will collect some of that fucking $100,000 liquidity. So, um, yeah, that's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say, man. Just people are fucking crazy. You guys take care.